Hi guys, this is Mike, and in today's video, we're going to be beginning a new series on research methods using Logos Bible software. So for any of you who are using Logos to do research for your study, either as a student, professor, pastor, or whatever variety that takes shape, this is going to be really helpful for you. So part one of this series is going to be on searching. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the way that we're going to be approaching this series is as if we have a particular topic of study that we want to cover and we want to do research on in order to write a paper, create a presentation, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to show you tools and features and logos that are going to help you to do that. And so for today, we're going to be focusing upon searching. So we're going to give you some, some real good tips on how to best search your library to hone in on a particular subject or topic. So for today, we're going to imagine that we are a student or a faculty member or a pastor who's wanting to write a paper or do research on the topic of the atonement. But our topic extends beyond just simply atonement. We're going to be talking specifically about the extent of the atonement or the scope of the atonement as it applies to people. So for whom did Christ die is ultimately the question that we want to answer today. So to begin any sort of search within Logos of our Logos library, the first thing we want to do is go over to the magnifying glass icon and we want to click that to launch a new search window. Now for this type of search, a basic search is going to be the best possible place to go if we're wanting to search all of our library. Now the next thing you want to do is go right here and yours might say search everything for. I'm going to go ahead and change this everything to all resources. I want to search all the resources in my library and not just an everything search. Everything's a little bit too broad. So we want to set this to all text and all resources. So there's a couple of places that you want to start. So since this is going to serve the role of a, uh, a little bit of a search tutorial, if we're interested in running a search for every place where the, uh, an article or something talks about the extent of the atonement, one of the best things to do, or one of the easiest things to do, is to simply type two keywords. So imagine we want to type the word extent, and we want to type the word atonement. Now when you type two words like this into a search in Logos, this is going to be searching for any place in an article where both of these words appear. It's serving the role of an and. It's searching saying every place where extent and atonement appear. So if we hit enter, this is going to search our entire library for all the places where both of these words appear. Now you might be saying, well, how large is an article? Because uh, you said it's going to appear with both words in an article. Now it depends on the different, different resources have different sizes of articles. If it's a journal, it's going to be the size of a journal article. Uh, if it's a Bible dictionary, it'll be the size of a particular Bible dictionary entry. Sometimes it's a chapter of a book so on and so forth. As you can see, the length of these articles really varies. So one of the downsides about doing this type of search is that you're not guaranteeing that these two words really have anything to do with one another when you run this search. Now you can see here from my results, we do have some pretty good results. So we've got a new dictionary of theology entry for, on the extent of the atonement. We've got an illustrations for biblical preaching um, instance. We've got a mobile ed video instance. We've got a lot of, of good hits, but we also have some other hits like this from historical theology, where all we see is the word atonement. We don't necessarily see the word extent because extent may appear somewhere further down in the article. So one of the ways that we can actually tie words more closely together is to use something called a proximity operator. And this is basically any time a word appears within a proximity of another word, as in a closer proximity, those words are going to be more logically related to one another than if they're further apart. So when we're doing proximity searching, there are ultimately four different proximity search operators, or four primary ones that you can use in Logos. These include the words before, after, near, and within. So each of these four will serve a slightly different purpose, but for today, we're going to use the search operator within. Now within is different from before and after in that within doesn't show any sort of priority to before or after. 
Uh, when you type before, that's saying when one word or group of words appears before. When you use after, it's just the other way around. Within shows no bias one towards the other. So we're going to type the word within between extent and atonement. And when using operators in logos, you want to type the operator in all capital letters. So we're going to type within in all capital letters. And let's go ahead and set our proximity to four words. So we're going to type the word for and the word words. And this is enough to run a proximity search in Logos. So we go ahead and run that search. And this is going to find all the places in our library where the word extent appears within four words of the word atonement. Now, right now, our search results, if you're like me, are showing what's called a ranked view. And this is Logos trying to rank your search results by the most or the best search uh, hits that it's confined. Now this isn't always the way that I want to view them. I actually like a different view. And this is what I would call a by resource view. So we can go ahead and click that. And this condenses our search results down into folders that are tied to specific resources in our library. Now, I have a pretty sizable library. So I've got still 1,640 results and 496 articles. So that's close to 500 different sections where I can find a search hit for this particular search. So how can I refine that? Well, one of the best ways that you can do that is to use what's called a search field. And a search field is basically each resource within Logos is split up into different fields of searchable text. If we look at this option that says all text up here and click that, it's got a drop down where we can actually search fields. If we click the arrow to the left of that, Notice we've got a drop down that shows all of these different searchable fields. So in our entire library, we can search things like cross references. Those are a separate searchable field. Or we can select footnote text. That's a particular searchable field. Two primary ones you need to be aware of, first being what's called heading text. This is the heading of a major article or section of text. And the other is called large text. This is very similar to that. This is actually based upon the size of font. Typically, larger size text is geared towards chapter headings and article headings. So once you've got those two selected, and those are the two that I highly recommend always selecting, and I don't have time to go into all the other options in here, we'll select those two. And notice that my results are now down to 104 and 50 articles, much more manageable than they were before. And if we scroll down here, I'm going to go ahead and find an article from Millard Erickson's Christian Theology. I'm going to open that up. And notice that we've got a chapter in here called The Extent of the Atonement. So I can open that up by simply clicking on the uh, header for that search hit, or I can select the actual search hit that's highlighted in there to go directly to that, uh, to that hit. I've also got William G.T. Shedd's Dogmatic Theology, another article on the extent of the atonement. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And if I keep scrolling down, I'll go looking a little bit more. We've got Ryrie's Basic Theology, another chapter on the extent of the atonement. How about Louis Burkhoff's Systematic, The Purpose and the Extent of the Atonement? Can keep scrolling down. Uh, how about, oh, here's um, Odin's systematic theology called the word of life for whom the extent of the atoning deed we can open that up as well so notice now we've well, just in that short period of time we've got five primary major systematic theologies from different traditions all opened up two chapters on the particular subject in which we're looking for but let's say that this is still not um, a broad enough search for us we like the nice and refined but let's say we want to find a few more how can we even uh, you know, expand this a little bit more but still stay quite refined? One of the ways that you can do that is to use synonyms. So if we go back up to our search where it says extent, maybe we can think of another word or a synonym for this that would still fit the bill. So in the very beginning of this, I mentioned that we were looking for the extent or the scope of the atonement. So how about we look for the word scope? So we can actually create something called a list in the very start here. So if we type a comma and type the word scope, and we put parentheses around this, this is creating what's called a list. Now we can find all the places where extent appears within four words of atonement, or scope appears within four words of atonement. It will look for both of those. So if we run that search, notice now we actually have a few more results in one additional article, so we just expanded a little bit more. Now notice it didn't expand too much, but it gave us something. So we could think of other synonyms we could use here, or perhaps synonyms for the word atonement.
So that's going to bring us to the end of our quick tutorial on searching. Now this wasn't an exhaustive tutorial on searching, but this serves to show you one of the most effective ways that you can actually find targeted search results within your Logos library to help you in the front end of finding content for doing research. Now in our next video, we're going to take the next step in, you know, once we have our resources open, how can we begin to notate those and begin to do the process of research to find at a later time. So if you like this video, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below. I'd want to know if I should make more of this series, or if you're not liking it, don't worry about it. But if you'd like to see more of the series, you know, once you've liked it, make sure that you subscribe to the channel by clicking here. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos Bible software. Until next time.